Hello and welcome to NOV Live. I'm Michael Gaines, host of the podcast NOV Today, and uh, glad you are joining us today as we kick off a conversation uh, around drilling automation and uh, some of the technology that uh, is uh, really not, a, not necessarily in the future, but here today. And uh, so we've got an expert that uh, will be talking to us about that and taking your questions uh, as well. So really looking forward to sharing some of those insights and uh, in the conversation. And uh, so we'll get to our guest in just one moment. But uh, before we do, uh, as always, we have uh, Shelby Dumain here who is going to come in and uh, help us understand how you can uh, be a part of the conversation and also how you can share some of your feedback and questions as well. Hey, Shelby. Um, so there's a few different ways that our audience watching at home uh, can tune in and, and join along in the conversation. The first way is by simply commenting down below. So if you have a question for us at any point during the show, whether you're watching on Facebook, on LinkedIn, or on YouTube, you can comment your question and we'll, we're gonna get through as many as we can. Uh, we have a really exciting topic and a great guest today. Uh, so if you have a question for them at any point, just comment it down below. Then if some of the other ways that you can get in contact with us, say after the show, if you have more questions or if you have an, a comment for us, an idea for us, we love hearing from our viewers. And the ways you can do that is you can email us at socialmedia at NOV.com. So that's on the screen now. You can email us there. Uh, let us know what, what, you, what your thoughts are. And the other way, which is my personal favorite way, is you can actually give us a call. Uh, you can leave us a voicemail and keep it anonymous. You can share your name and title if you'd like to. Um, but if you'd like to give us a call, that number is country code plus one three four six two two three four seven nine nine. So you can give us a call there. Uh, we love hearing from everybody. Um, so, you know, I've been asking you to send us questions and give us your thoughts. Now, uh, this is the time of the show where I ask you a question and, and get and get your uh, best guess and best answer. So it's time for Rig Geek Question of the Week. Rig Geek's Post of the Week. All right, so kind of going along with our topic today, I'm going to pull the question up here now. Uh, so we're asking you, what was the name of the first rig that the Novos Reflexive Drilling System was commercial installed on? Uh, I'll give you a little hint. The year was 2016. Um, so if you think you know the answer of what was the name of the rig that the Novos, uh, the first Novos Reflexive Drilling System was commercial installed on. If you think you know that, comment it below. And I want to see where our rig geeks are and if y'all can guess the name of that rig. All right. Looking forward to seeing those guesses come in. And uh, to your point, Shelby, it looks like we have uh, quite a, a few viewers here. And we're glad that you all are joining us. Uh, looking like we've got uh, folks from Mexico, Algeria. Uh, I see uh, folks coming in from Colombia. Uh, looks like uh, India. So many, many rig geeks and viewers out there. So glad you are joining us and uh, look forward to getting your questions for uh, our guest today, who uh, actually I'll go ahead and introduce right now. So we're talking about drilling uh, automation. And, and uh, as Shelby alluded to, we're talking about uh, the Novos Reflexive Drilling System. So to help us uh, dive deep and uh, not only answer your questions, but uh, give you insight into this uh, technology, I want to introduce our guest, Matt Jackson. He's the product development engineer uh, supervisor for drilling automation here at NOV. So uh, Matt, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Yep, thanks for having me, Michael. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm I know that there are folks who might say, hey, you know, I'm I'm familiar with Novos. I've I've kind of you know followed it since the beginning. Uh, but as always, here we like to you know maybe not necessarily assume that everyone knows. So for those that may not know as much about Novos. Could you maybe give us a high-level overview of, of what, uh, what, what is this, this technology? What is Novos? Yeah, for sure. So Novos is our process automation um, a platform that layers on top of NOV's existing control system, so Amphion or Cyberbase. And so what Novos does is automates a lot of the repetitive tasks that the drillers have to go through um, in order to essentially start up their tools, drill the stand down, um, and what we can do as well is provide a platform for other you know, kind of third-party systems to plug into uh, our platform to be able to um, execute 
different proprietary drilling best practices. Um, so for, for a nutshell, that's, that's kind of the uh, novice in the hole right there. Right. Okay. And I, I know that, uh, you know, when you, you talk about Novos, um, you know, it's not necessarily a, a technology that, uh, that has been developed in a vacuum or, or really even something that, uh, you know, just came up overnight. This is something that uh, has seen uh, action in the field. And, and as a matter of fact, there was a, a recent article, uh, I think that was written uh, just on, on Novos. Is that right? Yeah, for sure. Um, but I guess to back up as well. So in, in addition to, um, you know, kind of or, or Novos executing real repetitive tasks consistently. So things about, um, if you think about the connection time. So mm -hmm. it's something, it's a, it's a real tangible metric that uh, operators and contractors look at. And it's done pretty similarly, you know, across different land rigs in the Permian or, or offshore rigs out in Thailand or the North Sea. Mm -hmm. um, so what that is essentially once the driller is, is connected to the stand, uh, Novos takes over and uh, you know, pulls out of the slips, opens, open up the, um, you know, the IBOP, starts to ramp up the tools, engages the formation consistently time and time again by executing a sequence of, of pre-configured um, uh, configurations, I guess. Uh, but then also uh, on different activities such as, you know, um, uh, things called our friction test, mm or things that are um, uh, drillers perform a sequence of, of, of sequences for, for pickup, slack off. And what we've seen for our friction test too, is that we've been able to provide a lot more consistency as well in, in different um, processes. Right. So for the, um, yeah, for, I, I guess we, I think we, we might have a graphic up for, um, for just to show kind of what mm -hmm. that looks like. So yeah, so this is just showing um, kind of the, the manual uh, process of, of capturing the pickup. So the driller is here after he drilled the stand down, he hoists up uh, and the different lines on this graph here show um, just the different cycles that the driller does. And you'll see, you know, quite a bit of different inconsistency here. Right. So right. when Novos is performing this, uh, we are performing it uh, a lot more consistently in the next slide. Uh, and that consistency really gives drilling engineers, drillers, a lot more confidence in terms of um, having a, a better accuracy in the results. And that can tell you anything regarding, you know, what's going on mm -hmm. in the uh, in the well bore with different characteristics. And that can determine, you know, what the next process should be if they should, you know, uh, condition the well bore or, um, you know, do a, a variety of different tasks. Um, so that's something that we've been providing a lot more consistency on. So, so for those that may may not have been familiar with with the the graphics that we just showed, could you just maybe talk through real quick? So the the X, the x axis and y axis. What are we? Yep, what, yep. what are we looking at there? Yeah, for sure. So, um, so just uh, just to show real quick again, um, the the y axis is just the block position. <clears throat> x axis is time. So, <clears throat> as you can see, as as they're hoisting up, you have each different cycle. Um, you know. Uh, the first cycle they're hoisting up at one speed second cycle they're hoisting up at another speed um so this inconsistency is really hard to gauge an apples to apples comparison so if you have um you know uh, our automated system doing the same thing over and over again then you can have a, a much more accurate apples to apples comparison uh, to give you know drilling engineers or or uh, service companies a lot more um I guess confidence to know what the well bore is telling them, so they can make you know subsequent actions afterwards. Right. Okay. Nope. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate the the clarification. And for those that just joined us, we are talking with Mr. Matt Jackson, who is the product development engineer supervisor for drilling automation here at NOV, and uh, we're talking about all things drilling automation and specifically. Uh, talking about uh, the Novos Reflexive Drilling System. So if you have a question on uh, drilling automation or uh, a question for, for Matt, uh, he has graciously volunteered himself to be in the hot seat today uh, to take your, your questions, but I, I know that he enjoys the conversation as, as much as we do. So uh, be sure to put your questions in, whether you're watching us on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, or YouTube, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely get to that. Shelby is... is uh, uh, online right now, ready to to start getting those questions ready. So feel free to put those in now, and and we'll get those ready for 
uh, for Matt. So uh, Matt, maybe, so I, I think, uh, you know, it, it's it's really helpful and, and those graphics were really, uh, it, at least to me, very clear to demonstrate the consistency that uh, uh, a system like Novos can provide for for the driller and really overall drilling operations when, you know, you, you, you don't have, it, it provides a level of that predictability and uh, consistency and, and, and certainly in reducing the, the over, you know, the uh, almost overburden of workload on, on the driller, um, you know, especially like you said, giving them the consistency and, and then learning from best practices. So, um, so I think that's why I, I kind of got so excited earlier and I mentioned the, the article that, mm -hmm. uh, that, that you and, and, uh, and others were able to, to write about because it, it really helps, you know, put, put real world, uh, a real world face to, to kind of some of these, these items we, uh, we've, we've been developing. And so, so to that point, do you mind talking about a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. So uh, the recent article that um, we collaborated with uh, uh, Chevron and then also I think our internal folks with, uh, with MD Taco uh, with different Kaizen and other applications. Uh, but the article really highlights um, where these automation projects were extremely successful. And what we've shown uh, that the most successful deployments of the Novo system has been where we have had a very high level of engagement um, from not just the drilling contractor, but also the operator uh, and service company as well, because these are you know, kind of the key stakeholders that will make um, you know, this, this a success. And mm. so a lot of um, kind of the upfront work in terms of aligning kind of the goals and expectations, and then making sure that we have consistent milestones uh, along the way of our automation journey. So typically on the front end, uh, those milestones look like, okay, making sure that uh, the drillers are trained and competent. And so what we've shown that is the most successful is, is that when we utilize our, what are called our, our rig performance consultants uh, for, you know, at the initial startup phase um, for these projects, it really helps to facilitate the adoption and the buy-in from the drillers so that they can gain a lot more confidence and not just confidence, but also self-sustainment of, uh, of learning and, and, and uh, adapting to the, the Novo system. Mm. And so this, and once kind of that first milestone of competency is achieved, then we can look at, okay, what's next? And then we can start looking at different factors like, okay, let's drive down that, you know, the initial metric that I mentioned before of, of the connection time. Let's, let's focus on that and drive it down to a certain level. And then from there kind of increment to say, okay, what's next? All right, let's use more uh, advanced applications um, um, and kind of gauge, you know, performance and metrics of those and increment as well, what's next? So that's that's been pretty cool and exciting. And um, I think what we've also seen too, and I think Clay mentioned this in his earnings call yesterday, where we had kind of a parallel uh, events where, you know, back in, I guess, the 80s, where there was a stark um, uh, contraction in the market and operators were pushing their contractors for continued you know, efficiencies, performance gains. And that really brought the wider adoption of the Varco top drive. Uh, which was, I guess, at that time, the, you know, the, the technical um, innovation at that time. And, and if uh, contractors were, were going to win contracts, then they, you know, had to see this as kind of the de facto um, piece of technology that were, uh, was going to get, get them these contracts. And what I've been seeing, um, you know, kind of a, a across not just land applications, but also now offshore as well, is that we're seeing kind of a parallel um, events where um, con or operators are really trying to push more and more efficiencies, uh, better performance, lower connection times, and automation is is now the vehicle to allow them to do these sort of things too. So it's been really exciting to see this and to see you know different contractors and operators go through those different phases of milestones uh, to you know to achieve you know the the type of successes that we define in this article. Right. Yeah. And I, and I know that it's it's really um, it must be really interesting, especially from your perspective, to be able to see, you know, kind of the the before and after. Right. So the before yeah. where there might have been misalignment of of goals and objectives or of, mm -hmm. of priorities or of metrics or, you know, mm -hmm. 
from you know, from the contractor side to know, well, I've got a crew here. That's great. But this one I'm trying to bring and to be able to see how, you know, technology you know, like Novos is able to come in and kind of, you know, really be the equalizer and, and yeah. help bridge bridge that gap. I'm, I'm yeah. sure you've seen it, I'm sure, firsthand. And Oh, yeah, definitely. Because well, you know, um, I for that rig geek question, I, I was out in the, uh, as a field engineer on that first rig. And to see, you know, kind of the evolution from there to where we're at right now as well. And what's been really cool is that um, for new um, new rigs or just you know, new to, to Novos, um, where we see, you know, the, the kind of the wow factor is once they, you know, kind of see the potential of, of, of how this system can really drive the, the you know, the performance gains, um, then once they kind of get familiar and learn the system, then they kind of, you know, they're, they're, these rigs are very, very proud in their performance and what they do. So now if we're, we're giving them the tools to, um, you know, kind of be the best performing rig in their fleet, you know, they, they, they love that. So they get to, you know, kind of, um, you know, celebrate that amongst the organiza organization and that, that kind of, you know, comes kind of wildfire and, and spreads and others want to become, okay, we want to be the best performing rig now too. So it's been really cool to see that uh, type of adoption across the fleet once they, you know, start to achieve, you know, that first kind of competency milestone and, and, and you know, kind of going through that evolution. Right. Really cool. Right. Kind of like, uh, yeah, who, who doesn't want to share, share good news, right? The, yeah, the exactly. but also the operational, operational wins. That's, uh, that's really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, I I know that uh, you know as as you continue to to be in the space and to to your point, right? You you've kind of been there from the uh, the beginning and that first rig, and so of course we're we're now moving through and and here today, but also consistently looking um, looking to the future. I, I think I said before the show, you know, you guys aren't uh, don't have your feet anchored in in cement, right? You're you're constantly walking forward and 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 developing. So to that point, I'd. I'd be interested in and i'm sure folks watching as well would like to kind of understand hey what's what's on the horizon what uh what should we be looking for uh that that you can talk about today that you can share with with those uh, around novos and what's the uh, upcoming developments yeah for sure so um kevin and it uh what we've had before in, in our three series so uh we've shown through those different case studies and the article details of how we've been able to provide a level of consistency and performance um, and, and really drive down that, you know, kind of that tangible metric of connection times. Um, but still, uh, the driller, you know, once they become more familiar, they know how to adjust those configurations based off of different uh, changing wellbore conditions. Uh, so what is very exciting in our four series is that we've collaborated very closely um, with folks over in um, uh, Norse, which is uh, the Norwegian uh, uh, Research Institute over in Norway. Uh, in terms of how we can um, apply uh, more advanced interfaces to allow applications to do certain uh, monitoring and mitigations of, of kind of costly downhole events. So, um, so for example, um, downhole events like uh, pack offs. So this is uh, uh, can sometimes occur when you know the drilling and, and all of a sudden if, if the cuttings aren't able to uh, you know, fully evacuate up the wellbore, um, and sometimes uh, you have a pack off event, and that pressure spikes off, uh, spikes up. And if you can't mitigate that pack off soon enough, then you can potentially uh, have a very costly downhole situation, which is going to be you know, time and money. So what we've opened up the interfaces to allow applications to do is essentially be able to, you know, write these different monitoring thresholds for you know, different pressure slopes, uh, uh, abnormal torque, abnormal hook load responses, and to automatically mitigate these certain costly downhole events, such as those pack offs, uh, potentially mud motor stalls as well. Um, and not just that too, but also uh, to be able to schedule different Novos activities. So like I said before about you know, how we've had real consistency in our friction tests, um, what's really cool now is that, okay, these applications can use the uh, results of those friction tests to build kind of, you know, for, for downhole comprehensive wellbore model that tells them, okay, you know, we're, we're getting a buildup of, of cuttings that, so we should probably schedule what's called like a, a reaming activity to you know, condition the hole and to, um, you know, to um, clean up the wellbore. So essentially now applications can call or schedule 
Novos activities. So it's not just going to be, okay, a really good driller, you know, reading his um, surface equipment and, and, and recognizing this, these different events. Now application developers can, can really, you know, do this to, um, themselves to really try to bridge that gap between a, a good driller and a great driller. Um, to allow them to focus more on the process. And so it's it's going to be very exciting to see uh, what's, what's coming up here uh, very soon. Yeah, no, I, I, I am, I think it's really interesting to see, uh, you know, again, the, the, the full spectrum of going from an idea to concept to an... Sorry about that. <laughs> can you hear me, Matt? Yep, I can hear you. <laughs> it looks like Michael froze there a little bit. Um, so for that, I'll go ahead and go into uh, the first question we have. And uh, we were wondering, can you tell us, I know you talked about it a little bit at the beginning. Can you tell us a little bit more about how uh, Novos integrates with other systems like Amphion or Cyberbase? Yeah, sure thing. So um, for layering, so we layer just on top of those existing control systems. So whenever we go out and do you know, some of these retrofits, we add um, a few additional hardware components um, have to kind of update those base control systems to be able to facilitate communication between us and Novos. Um, so depending on, on the control system, you know, it takes you know, a certain amount of time to do, uh, do this, um, but the, um, the installation and commissioning is, is pretty seamless and we've uh, um, gotten pretty good at it along the way. All right. Well, so, sorry about that. I think I I think I pulled a, a Houdini and uh, digitally disappeared, which uh, uh, the name of the game here here when you're you're at home. So, uh, but great. Well, uh, Matt wanted to get over to uh, some of the the questions that we have had come in from viewers. So mm -hmm. to do that, we're going to go ahead and bring in Shelby Dumain, uh, and uh, hopefully she won't pull a Houdini like me and and. <laughs> And and disappear into the the interwebs, but we'll. Oh, oh, okay. So we already got got her question. All right. So um, I think we have uh, some more questions actually that just uh, came in. Let's let's see if uh, maybe we can can get get those. Uh, let's see. So Shelby, do you uh, can you give us uh, some of the questions that uh, that just came in for for Matt? <laughs> Absolutely, sure can. Uh, so we actually got one. Let me go ahead and pull it on the screen so we can see that. Uh, so this comes from LinkedIn. And can you talk a little bit about how Novos contributes the safety of drilling operation? Yeah, for sure. So um, in terms of contributing to the safety of the operation, a lot of the times that um, when we're able to execute a series of you know um, repetitive task that allows the driller to kind of elevate his view from, you know, continuous button pushing um, and screen pushing to more focusing on uh, what his crew is doing, um, you know, the, uh, what his equipment is telling him. Um, so it really tries to elevate his view from more of, you know, kind of the uh, advanced crane operator to more of a process manager. And uh, that gives him a, a, a lot more ability to it's on the safety of his guys and the process as opposed to repetitiveness of what they do. Absolutely. And this next one uh, comes from Patrick on LinkedIn. He was wondering, has the application been tested in uh, real life? <laughs> I guess um, it depends on the application, but yes, uh, we have quite a series of different applications that are out in the field right now. Um, including a variety of different wellbore applications. So uh, ROP optimization applications like Kaizen has been field tested and proven in different areas and kind of continues to go through additional improvements. Um, Drill Link, uh, which is the remote uh, downloading capability, uh, but also other kind of like non NOV applications as well. Um, ROP optimize, uh, optimizers and others that have been field tested and proven, uh, but also gone through you know different uh, you know field feedback and, and looking for you know additional iterations as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And then here's this one uh, from LinkedIn. So he's wondering, uh, do you need specialized electronics personnel on board in case of system failure? Um, kind of how does that? What's that plan B, or or, or what does that look like with Novos? Yeah, uh, for sure. So no, um, we don't really, we don't re require any additional uh, personnel on board um, apart from, you know, the initial training phase. 
Um, so if there's if there's any sort of um, you know, anomaly that uh, could potentially occur, the drillers are able to by all at any time um, kick the automation system out by just a, a simple motion of the joystick, and it's back to you know, manual drilling, uh, back to where it was before. So uh, really, there isn't any uh, additional need for any sort of um, personnel on board. And then also too. Uh, we do have the remote support capabilities to remote into the system and, and um, you know, diagnose any sort of anomalies as well. Great. So I think uh, we have time for one more question. We're going to get this one uh, from uh, a mate on LinkedIn. And he's wondering, can you elaborate a little bit more on uh, how can we know TND operation during real time? And we've gotten several questions kind of on how real time data works and, and what that looks like. Okay, so how, how we can know uh, torque and drag operations during real time, I'm assuming? Okay, so uh, for our friction test, yeah, we've, we've gone through a, a few iterations of the friction test and improved it based off of the lab field feedback. So uh, what we look for is, is kind of a, a dynamic breakover of that hook load response uh, to be able to capture our pickup and slack off, uh, but also prior to that, our, our free rotating weight as well. So whenever we capture these values, we, we populate it in the data stream. Um, so there are folks who can consume that data stream. I think uh, in yesterday's earning call as well, uh, I think MD Taco has been using those data streams to um, populate real-time torque and drag plots. Um, so it's, you know, we make those data streams available for anyone. Um, so if you wanna to, you know, make your own you know, pretty, hardcore uh, torque and drag plots, uh, then you have the, uh, the capability of doing that. That's really good, Matt. And I, I know that uh, as as always, as never never fails, there are always uh, you know more conversations and questions than uh, we have for, for each program. So for those that uh, are watching that maybe you had a question that we weren't able to get in today's program, uh, there's certainly a couple ways that you can do that. Um, uh, one, I know that Matt is more than happy to uh, to take uh, your email. So if you'd like to send him a note, uh, you can do that by sending an email to uh, matthew.jackson at nov.com. Uh, if you'd like to know more about the Novos uh, reflexive drilling system and uh, be able to read some more information on it, a uh, simple uh, website for you, nov.com forward slash Novos. And that'll take you straight to the site where you can get more information and uh, click the contact bus uh, button at the bottom of the page if you'd like to uh, have someone uh, like Matt or, or someone else on the team reach out to you. So I've been talking with uh, Matt Jackson, who is uh, with the uh, the Novos team. He's the product development engineer supervisor with drilling automation. So uh, Matt, thanks so much for uh, sharing uh, your insight and uh, talking about Novos with us today. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me here, Michael. Really appreciate it. Yeah, our pleasure. All right, well, we're now gonna shift over to Shelby again and get the answers to this week's Rig Geek Post of the Week. So Shelby, for those that uh, may have, have joined, maybe a, a after we, we talked about at the top of the show, can you give the question one more time, just in case someone wants to, to try to challenge themselves with a little bit of trivia? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so this question, I'll pull it up here is we asked, what is the name of the first rig that the Novos Reflexive Drilling System was commercial installed on? And uh, true to, to our rig geeks, you know, I can always count on them. We did get a lot of people correctly answering the question. And, and uh, so the question is, you know, I was like, drum roll, it is Precision 601. And we actually have an image of that we're gonna show here. Yeah. So that was the answer, the first, uh, rig that the name of the first rig that the Novos reflexive drilling system was commercial installed on is the precision 601 right there. Right. Cool. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's really good. Yeah. I saw a lot of the, the answers coming through as well. So fun, uh, fun stuff. Good, good to know. Well, thanks Shelby. Really appreciate it. And, uh, as always, thank you for joining us and for being a part of our conversation today. Uh, if you have any additional questions that you'd like for us to, uh, answer, uh, certainly, again, uh, nov.com slash novos if you wanted to know more there. Or if you have any questions about NOV Live, happy to take your questions at social media at nov.com. Uh, you can, of course, also give us a call 
uh, or you can leave a comment right here on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. So from all of, all of us here at NOV, thanks for watching and for listening, and we'll talk to you again next time.